Hey, how's it going today? And I wanted to just bring you this quick tutorial on how to use the Sky Tracer 2 function in Lightwave. It was actually created for cool, atmospheric, professional looking backdrops that you can bring in as a textured environment. So you can think of it really as a way of creating a backdrop and then it not being a really a dynamic function that you would use yourself. Although it could actually be used dynamically, it's better to render out the image and bring it in as a static backdrop. So just think of it as a way to create a backdrop. So anyway, we're gonna come in here, we're gonna click off gradient, we're gonna go to sky tracer and double click there and it pops up here. And to see it, you've actually got to go into camera view and then you've also got to go into VPR. And this kind of, this is the default look where you can see a horizon in the sky. If you click F8, it'll actually give you a choice of presets. So you've got atmospheres, flat clouds, and volumetrics. There's your volumetrics, there's your flat clouds, and there's your atmospheres. I've already been playing around with this a little bit. I think that's what you got to do to get comfortable with it. I think if you come in and tweak the settings, you can actually come up with some fairly photorealistic backgrounds that are actually very, very cool. So let's just play around real quick with uh, the Mars. So I'll double click and go yes. And there is Mars. Now it's a little disorienting at first because you don't really know where you are, but there is a sun in the sky somewhere. So we're going to click on the camera, change to rotation, and we're going to see if we can't find it. So it's really bright right there. So my guess is that we go up on the pitch. The sun is up there somewhere. Well, let me see. I thought it would be up there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now let me just pitch up a little bit more. I was trying to create a shot where I had the sun and the horizon together. So you'll notice here you've got a lot of tabs to play around with. You've got atmosphere, clouds, and sun. And under atmosphere, you've got atmosphere and haze. So you've got a lot of categories to play around with. Under sun, one of the categories is sun position. And in just playing around this already, it's set to preset as to San Francisco. But if you send it to Geneva, it actually lowers the sun. <laughs> So if you come into latitude and I think you go up, it brings it down lower and lower. So I'm trying to create a more dramatic shot here. So I'm trying to get the sun a little bit lower in the sky. And so that's how you can play with the position. I would recommend putting all the settings on high quality, whatever you have. If you see a setting, I would put it. Now here I was looking at clouds. I think that's the one thing that maybe doesn't look as good and that you have to really tweak. And if you tweak them, I think they do look good. I like these high altitude clouds better than the low altitude ones. And if I click enable clouds, the clouds come in. And then of course, with their altitude, I can adjust this and kind of reposition them a, a little bit. I think the clouds look better when they're a little bit thinner. So I might drop the opacity on them and I might drop the density a little bit. And I might also go into texture and I would increase the frequencies to like 16. And that's gonna bump up your render time. And then of course you can play around with the texture which again lessens the clouds. So you don't wanna maybe push it down too hard but maybe just a hint of clouds there. Okay, and I would just say play around with it to see what you can come up with. But my guess is if you play around with the settings, you'll actually see that you come up with something that actually looks pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, I think that's about it. This is uh, volumetric rendering. I haven't really played around with that one. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave that off. And that I think is about it. So once you get the looking the way you want, all you gotta do is come in here to Sky Baker. I'm pretty sure you wanna increase the resolution on this. So let's just go 1024 to start with. And you can give it a name and we'll just call this Mars 4 or 5, it doesn't matter. And then we'll image type. I'm just gonna pick a PNG 24. And then we'll set the mapping as spherical and we'll turn on anti-aliasing and we'll go okay. And depending on your scene and how much you got going on, it may or may not render out, but this one rendered out pretty quickly. If sometimes if you've got a lot going on, it'll take a little while. So once the scene is rendered out, you're, you're essentially done with this. So you can clear the whole thing out and then we can go back into the backdrop. We'll turn off gradient again. We're gonna add an environment. We're gonna go to textured environment. We're gonna double click this. We're gonna go to texture and then we're gonna come up here to load and we're gonna load in wherever we put our image. And in my case, that could be almost anywhere. 
I think it's here. So Mars. But I could then I call it Mars. Where did I put it? Okay, let me see. I gotta go into my render properties real fast here. Check what my output was. Uh, oh, it's in the 2018 content folder. Okay, so anyway, I gotta go back into backdrop here, back in here. Double click there, click there, go to load image. So it's in here somewhere. Uh, so I thought that's what it said. Live content. Oh, there it is. Gosh. Okay, open. And then there it is. And then if we change this to spherical and put this on Y and hit close, we should see our image. And I go VPR. And I go to camera view. And there's our image. And then I can readjust the camera here to get in a little bit different. If I come up here to rotation on camera, and go on heading, you can see the whole 360 degrees around, which I think is, is pretty cool. Quite honestly, looking at this, this actually looks pretty good. I can see this looks fairly realistic. I mean, it looks fairly, it has a nice photorealistic quality to it. And so that's the whole thing. And then you could bring in a 3D spaceship in here and animate it across the, going across the horizon or off into the distance or something like that. So this is Sky Tracer. I think the takeaway from it is that if you're looking to create a nice spherical textured environment that where you've got this kind of dramatic lighting in the background, I think this could work perfectly well for you. It's not that hard to set up, but you do have to kind of tweak the settings and get a look you want. Once you get that, then you just bake it out and then bring it back in as a textured environment so anyway that's all i had for today i hope you found this helpful take care and i will talk to you later